You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. Hello and welcome back to uh, Claret and Blue. It's actually a special episode of our Aston Villa podcast today. I'm James Rushton, of course joined by uh, Patrick Rowan. Today, Pat, we're talking about the Aston Villa nominees for the uh, Fans Football of the Year. Unfortunately, no Villa player made the main shortlist, but of course there's a club vote and there's a player to give the uh, the big gong to um, <laughs> at the end of the voting. But we're going to discuss the four nominees, Pat. So Ash Priest chose the nominees and of course the year hasn't an end, as an ended. There's been big change. Aston Villa, of course, Dean Smith left the club. Stephen Gerrard came in. So there's plenty of scope for certain players to improve. Mm-hmm. But at the moment, we've got four players. We've got um, Esri Conza, we've got Douglas Louise, got emmy martinez and of course we've got matty cash um big uh big some big stars on the international stage though Pat. Uh, which one do you want to talk about first i think i'll go for emmy martinez i mean, you know the the phenomenon as Lionel messi regarded him and it's not surprised to be honest you know 15 clean sheets last season i think it's four this season and he's earned every single one yeah last season at 76.8 percent save ratio which was let me look seventh in europe and then uh, when you when you take that into account, it's like the rest of them, are like the PSG keeper and all that. I think he had fifteen as well. Our black Courtois, the, the likes of those, but they're not they're not making as many saves as him. To be honest, Martinez made one hundred and thirty five saves last season, which was only, the only two keepers that made more than him were Aaron Ramsdale and Sam Johnston, and weren't they the two keepers that got relegated in the Premier League last season? Sheffield <laughs> United and West Brom. Yeah, so it says he's, it he's completely earned the clean sheets. I think in terms of looking at the XG, post-XG, he prevented about 7.4 goals last season. It was up there with, I think it was only Odd Black and Ariola that prevented more goals than him last season. So, yeah, Martinez, that pair, the 15 clean sheets last season paired with the uh, Copper America, Copa America success of Lionel Messi, probably, he'd be probably one of my picks, definitely. So, he got, he's got four clean sheets as well already this year. I yeah. mean, I, I, I think I've seen... Yeah, I've seen some fans say that he it hasn't been the, the uh, standard, but I think that's because the bar he set was so so high. Yeah. He's still been very very good, and of course an absolute showing for this. Um, of course we you just talk about Aston Villa, but the international success as well, a massive massive international impact that he actually had in the in the Copa America. Mm-hmm. Of course, went went absolutely viral for his antics, yeah. um, and a big part of what we talk about when we talk about Emmy Martinez is, is the mentality that he brings back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think. In the Copa America, I think he only conceded one goal in the group stage or something like that, and it was the penalty, and he saved the penalty, and then they scored the rebound. So he's, he's a bit of a monster, to be honest. He's a bit of a man possessed. And I think it has caught up with him, to be honest, the international success, not in a bad way, but as it would for anyone, like you said, when you went to Berlin, you were shattered when you came back. And Martin has been going through and from Argentina non stop for various reasons. I think family issues and obviously internationals. And I think he did have a relatively slow season. And not it wasn't even a bad start, to be honest. It was just yeah. he wasn't making the saves that you probably expect of him. Like the first game against Watford, I think one went under his legs or something. You know, maybe last season, if he's a bit fresher, he makes that save. But and then uh, Newcastle, I think he was a bit uh he had that penalty incident that got disallowed by VAR. And it was just you were beginning to question the decision making, but then in recent weeks I think he's back to top form. Just doing everything you can, you can ask of him, and solid and confidence, and yeah, the mentality as you mentioned was shown against uh, Bruno Fernandez. It broke him, and it almost broke out Bamiang as well. He saved that penalty as well. Mm-hmm. He's just a bit of a mentality monster. Who said? Was it Klopp that said that about his Liverpool team? A mentality, yeah, monster, the mentality yeah. monster. So yeah, he's yeah, just bang. one of those pipes don't burst under pressure, and he's exactly what you want in the foundation of your team. Yeah, I mean, it's always been like goalkeeping has been seen as this you know there's a physic physicality to it you have to be quite tall mm. almost quite lanky in terms of your uh your stature so you know there has to be a certain type of, of of build to be a goalkeeper but also you see a lot about the mentality and of course all footballers must have a certain mentality and a certain physicality to partake in in the sport but we, we with martin as you see almost that eliteness what yeah. separates the almost you know if you're talking about the chaff you're talking about people who are still worth about 15 million pounds but the week from the chaff em- emmy martinez has established himself as one of the world's finest goalkeepers oh, um definitely. which we're talking about an aston villa player here and i know we we have had jack Grealish, we've had success in the past we're talking about a member of the current squad who is right up there mm-hmm. um and 
it, you know, rough diamond. He, he's come to Aston Villa. I wouldn't say at a, a, quite a, an advanced age, 27, 28, 29 for a goalkeeper. Quite young. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember in football he's manager, like you, you wouldn't give your goalkeepers at 22 to start, would you? Be your 30 yeah. year old. So he's still got plenty, there's plenty of time. And, you know, has he hit his peak? Or is there more to come? And I, I think there is more, a lot more to come from him, which is, it's scary. Yeah. To, to talk yeah. about scary for the opposition. I mean, absolutely yeah. fine for us, Pat. But yeah, uh, what what does the outlook look look like going forward for uh, Martinez? Then it's one of those. I think he's going to only going to develop with Steven Gerrard. There, I think they, they've started releasing those training videos, haven't they? And I think you, they've released a Neil Cutler and Emmy Martinez one the other day, and it was just the work he puts in is just elite, mm. to be honest. And I think he's only going to excel the more he gets at it. I think his confidence is back now. So hopefully the uh, the clean sheets will flood back in. I think he probably would have had another one to his name if it wasn't for a last minute lapse in concentration against Palace. Mm. I don't know who I don't know who we'd blame for that, but it kind of just drif- trickled past him. But mm. yeah, it should have been a clean sheet, let's be honest. But moving forward, yeah, it's very promising. And he'll be tested to, on uh, Wednesday, I'm pretty sure, against City. So he better be in form. Yeah, absolutely. Well, here's what Ash Priest had to say about uh, Aston Villa's number one. That first season at Aston Villa won so many plaudits and especially the, the back end of, of the second half of the season in, in 2020, early, obviously at the, the earlier part of this year. Um, and he's continued that on. Obviously, it's not been the easiest of starts to the new season for, for Aston Villa, but Martinez has still been a, a real kind of strong point in that squad. Um, and again, we spoke about how Cash got international recognition. Martinez has that now. And and of course, Capin, you know, he'll look back on this year so fondly because of not only what he's achieved with Aston Villa, but for him to win Copa America with Argentina as well. And it, and it really shows that, you know, he's not just the best goalkeeper at Aston Villa. He's one of the best in the Premier League. And actually right now, probably one of the best in the world too. You just took the words out straight out of my mouth there. I think there's not many better in world football, Ned. There really isn't. I mean... He was rubber stamped over the last few weeks when he was nominated for the, that Yashin Trophy uh, amongst the best in Europe. And the last season, during the calendar year as well, he's out Villa to a club record high 15 clean sheets. And it's all he's doing, even in Gerard's first game uh, against Brighton. Um, two two moments, two good saves at nil nil. And in the end, like um, Villa go on to win that game without them saves from Martinez, that wouldn't have been possible. So them little intricacies like that, just saves at the big moments and. In terms of the Cup America as well, helping Messi win his first major trophy with Argentina. I think, I think Messi loves him now. I mean, he said himself he's one of the best in the world. So Messi knows a player when he sees one as well. And yeah, really, really affectionate character. Um, one of boy, he's been as well. Twenty million pounds from Arsenal. I uh, know Arsenal got Rams down now, but Martinez has been a massive sign for Villa. And like I've said, one of the best in world football for me. So there you have it. The next one on our list, Pat, is a, is a centre-back. He's not Tyron Mings. It's Esri Konza, who has, uh, came leaps and bounds since he joined the club. Wasn't the starting centre-back when he initially arrived from Brentford for a fee, I think around £12 million-ish. Um, he's just come on in a long, a, a big, big way to be. Probably one of the first names on the team sheet, which is outstanding. You know, his value, if it hasn't doubled, it's you know, tripled. If it hasn't tripled, it's quadrupled. He is, you know, he's a diamond for Aston Villa. He's a Rolls Royce. He's everything you wanted that successor to James Chester to be. And he is head and, you know, he is head and shoulders above almost anyone else we could consider partnering Tyrone Mings in that role, that right centre back. Mm-hmm. He's been brilliant. Um, doesn't, hasn't at all, since he took the role as that centre back, hasn't at all looked like he'd be shifted from it, which, you know, yeah. Tyrone Mings has been benched. Not Esri Conzo, which is, you know, says it all about impact. What have you got to tell us about the man? Well, he's just one of the most reliable players of a cinema villa shirt, to be honest. He's just so last season, a massive part to the 15 clean sheets. I think no error is leading to a goal, a, a shot, an opponent's shot. I think Mings had five. He was only dribbled past eight times. And then if you compare that to Ruben Diaz, who's largely regarded as one of the best centre halves in the league and part of that Man City defence, he was dribbled past 17 times. So it's just, Konza, I think he's probably gone under the radar this season because Villa have struggled defensively and we're not as solid, so we're not focusing on the defence as much. But he's been, once again, a reliable player. I think the red card against West Ham was a bit of an anomaly. anomaly sorry, hard word there. Um, I don't think that was entirely his fault. And then there's, was it a goal-scoring opportunity? I don't know if it is on Bowen's right foot going away from goal. But, yeah, uh, yeah I think he's up there. I think he was second in blocks for us last season. Once again, as soon as he's, ca- no, I don't think anyone expected him to grab the shirt like he has. To be honest, like, mm. or the twelve million when we signed from Brentford, we all thought, ah, oh, 
four years maybe or coming to the side, challenge the likes of Engels who we thought would be the first team one. But yeah, as soon as he's got got uh, into the side, it's been impossible to displace him, to be honest. I think it'll be the exact same thing about England if he eventually gets in or when he eventually gets in. I think once he's in there, you'll see how reliable he is. And it'll be impossible to displace him, to be honest. And there's been links to Joe Gomez in the past few days, and I was kind of looking at it like, yeah, it's a really good player, but I, I kind of like Esri Kanza more. Like he's rarely injured. He's pretty much the same type of player. They're both fast, strong, good on the ball, composed. But I, I prefer Esri Kanza to be honest. And Liverpool have been linked with Esri Kanza, Esri Kanza before. So yeah, I think he's quality definitely up there. You're still only just turned twenty four as well, and we talked yeah, about exactly. Martinez approaching his peak. Kanza's nowhere near it yet. There's so much more to come from him and. As we say, first and one of the yeah. first names on the team sheet already broke through at Charlton as a teenager, at Brentford as a 20 year old, Villa in the Premier League in yeah. dire straits at 21. Hasn't looked back since, and th- yeah. there's loads more to come. England's a tough one because of the congestion yeah. in the one, the, the two positions he can play. Um, of course, he probably won't be called up as a fullback, but he can play yeah. there as well. But in centre back, it's a tough one. But Portugal has been. Yeah mentioned on the cards and as we saw with Matty Cash that option isn't mm-hmm. always barred off I mean I think Conte can play for Angola Portugal and England and it seems almost like if you were to judge by the end of the year what's the most likely call up for Conte yeah. Gareth Southgate's paid a lot of attention to Villa but could the Portuguese call up be more likely I think it's quite a frightening prospect to see Diaz and him in the as a set of <laughs> partnership to be honest I don't think you get through there but yeah, I think it'd be Portugal's gain and England's loss if they don't call him up. I've, I've watched, I mean, I'm only 23, but I've watched a fair few centre-backs at Villa and I've rarely been as like confident in a centre-back than I am in Esri Kanza. I feel like every time he has the ball, I'm completely confident he won't mess up, control it, drive the defence, do whatever, uh, drive through the midfield. Yeah, he's one of the best I've ever seen, to be honest. Big, big praise. And uh, I think he's a, a, if he was to win the uh, Aston Villa leg of the fans footballer of the year i don't think i could really really argue with that i feel no. he's had a, he's had a fine year martinez has probably you know hit the real high bar but in terms of cons age that's what's what separates him really from the pack yeah. i mean of course our other nominees in, in douglas louise and matty cash young but in in a good kind of defense that solid defense in parts last year yeah. look at cons age as a center back He's always a 7 out of 10, isn't he? And sometimes he's an 8 or a 9 out of 10. I think Josh Williams the other day was talking about target and he was like, okay, the best you'll get is like an 8 out of 10, 7, but it's usually like a 6.5, 7. But Kanz is like solid, 7.5 every single game, never does anything really wrong. And then has that odd game where he's just completely dominant, reads everything perfectly and just completely like secures the defence, yeah? So you're definitely up there. Yeah, I think uh, a very deserving nominee and a... Definitely a deserved winner if that comes to it. Here's what uh, Aston Villa club writer Ash Priest had to say about our rock at the back. Yeah, it's crazy, Conte. When you watch him live, you don't you don't notice him. He's that good. I mean, he could play with slippers in his in, in his uh, dressing gown. He's, he's so good, so comfortable on the ball. It doesn't phase him. He's really, really, really rough on in, in that sense. And he's another player Villa desperately miss when he's not in the eleven. Um, and it's baffling amongst the dire villains that can't continue overlooked by England. Um, I know he wasn't happy being left out of the last squad. I think the previous boss, Dean Smith, said that. He was gutted, you know, because given his form, I think Villa just did well at Old Trafford, won there, a couple of clean sheets. And you think he's nailed on. And I think, the, like I said, I think Portugal is sniffing around him, you know. I think I think a back two of Portugal, a uh, sense about pairing of Conte and Ruben Diaz isn't too shabby, you know. So, yeah, he could be England's loss and, and Portugal's gain if it continues, but I mean, he's a rock at the back for Villa, is Conte. He's probably my pick out of the, of the bunch we've spoken about. And just 24 as well. Uh, 12 million quid two summers ago, going from strength to strength. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit surprising to see Mings be, being uh, the pick over Conte. But yeah, I think Conte, Conte has had a, a tremendous year and rightfully among, amongst his listeners. There we go then. One person actually made the decision to switch nationality was nominee Matty Cash, who has recently been capped for Poland. If you look on all the uh, football kind of databases, his flag has changed from uh, the St. George's Cross to the Polish national flag. I call it the Voltorb, like the Pokemon. <laughs> very, very similar. But he, you know, he's uh, mixing, rubbing shoulders with uh, 
Robert Lewandowski and uh, plenty of others. He's in the international scene now and a deserved part, isn't it? Yeah, in terms of player of the year, I'd say it's more. he's more in there for his performances so far this season. I think he's been arguably our best player this season. And it's kind of a, an emergence. Like We always knew he was capable of it last season with like his defensive ability. He showed some bits of quality going forward, but he's just such an athlete as well. Like Regularly, like controlling the ball at full sprint I just that's how what amazes me how I think he's grown on the ball in possession this year he looked a lot more of a threat going forward I think he equaled his goal contributions already this season with the goal and that assist in the cup but to last year's I think it was two assists but yeah I think I've got some stats uh second for pressures most tackles won most interceptions second in blocks and 276 touches which is the second most in the team as well so his growing influence in the side is clear for everyone to see, and I think that's only going to increase through uh, as Gerard works with him a bit more because he, he just loves his fullbacks to get forward. And I think it's been evident with Target and Cash this season already under Gerard. But yeah, I think he's quality, Matty Cash, and yeah, deserves to be up there. Yeah, he it's almost quite understated this fullback role, but as you said, the the bar that Matt Target sets and <laughs> how up and down it can be. With Matty Cash, it seems to be going up and up a little yeah. bit, and obviously, obviously there's some off games, but he's been a consistent performer, which is something Villa have lacked yeah. across the board um, for a while. But you know, it looks like a, a good era for the club now. The recent years in the Premier League, uh, last year, exciting in points, and part of that is players like Matty Cash, still young. You know, we talk, talk about Conza's age. Matty Cash is only a you know. 100 or 70 days older than Esri Conza, <laughs> which is it, it's fascinating to consider how much more room there is for this team to grow. Um, of course, you could do with a, a bit more experience, a bit more expertise in some mm-hmm. situations. Same goes probably for Tyra Mings and Matty, Matty Target as well. Um, Matty Cash deserve nominee though, but I can't, can't really argue with it. I feel Ooh. like it has been a up and down 2021. We all know the stats, the win stats, and what happened to our former manager because of of how we tailed off this year, but Matty Cash, head and shoulders, he's, he's done really, really well. Yeah, I think he was, talking about the last few games under Smith, I think he was, like even watching the West Ham game, the Southampton game, there was one player that was constantly like driving the team forward, dragging us, putting that challenge in that gets the crowd a bit fired up. And it was Matty Cash, it was Matty Cash bringing the intensity, Matty Cash bringing the quality going forward and doing probably the role of three or four players around him. So, yeah, if it wasn't, I think he got injured at the end of last season as well, out of the hamstring injury maybe that put him out for the end of the season. That's probably limited his chances to win this award. But if he continues his form that he's showing this season, I think next season he'll well up for it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, again, I, I, I see the nominees and there's only four. And you look at the names in the Villa team, how kind of... Even people like Marvellous in the camera, I know he's only kicked yeah. on really well in the very, very recently in the last two games. But people like Jacob Ramsey, who it's, this has probably come a bit too soon for. But yeah. And again, there's there's always next year. But I'm struggling to argue with Matty Cash because of the intensity and the energy yeah. he brings and the consistency that, that that's there. Fallback is a hard position. It's a yeah. position that it seems Gerard's tactic is about. It flows through. But it also targets on the opposite team, so it's a it's a point of real real intensity for both your team and the other team. It's mm-hmm. a strength and weakness, and such an important role. And he and he does it, and he can only get better. I feel. Um, but anyway, here's what Ash Priest had to say about uh, Aston Villa's newly minted uh, Polish fullback Matty Cash. Yeah, the, the Polish Kafu, what a year he's had. Um, got his first goal for the club as well against Everton, a, a great strike, and yeah, he's just been just. A prime example of getting good talent from the championship, you know, 14 million quid. Uh, been ever present under the previous manager Smith as well. I think I think he's going to thrive under under Steven Gerrard as well. And just good at both aspects going forward, um, getting on the end of things and he's delivering to the back is he's phenomenal. And just at the back as well, he's one of them in fan favourites, you know, gets stuck in, steams into players and gets to get the crowd up and start a bit of momentum. So, Matty Cass, what a pick he's been 2020, good signing. And then uh, this year he's had as well. And I know Villa have lost the manager, Smith, and we've got a new one now in Gerard. But I think Cash is here to stay for a long time, signed a, a long-term deal. Poland international now, as you say. And yeah, I think I think, I think uh, it's England's loss, to be fair. I know they've got the blessed with the talents at right back, but Cash offers something a little bit different and he's all in. Got a great style and the fans love him. Ned, they really do. And yeah, I think he's going to be a fan's favourite from here on in. I really do, yeah. Right then, Pat, it's the last one. And uh, it's Douglas Louise. He has been missing from a few games recently. He came in against Palace in our most recent game. Sent off. Uh, there was a phantom red card 
that got thrown in. Um, that's Douglas Louise all over, isn't it? He has that 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 passion, that intensity, almost that fury, the stroppiness. He's the the whole package mentally. Still very very young. This is a theme of the the picks outside Martinez, twenty three, um, about to turn twenty four, quite soon. Um, he's been a mainstay for Aston Villa ever since he joined. Variety of different roles. Where does he excel, and what makes him a deserving nominee, Pat? I've always liked Douglas Lewis ever since we signed him in, I mean, it was the 2019-20 season. I thought yeah. he just he just showed that bit of quality that I thought was always there and he was always going to push on it. And he has done, in my opinion. One of those, when when the team's playing bad, like towards the back end of last season, we were struggling, like the game against Manchester United. And he does make mistakes at times. I think they're over-scrutinised, possibly. And it's probably unfair to judge him on what we've seen so far as well because I don't think we play him in his best position. Or I don't think he is a holding midfielder. And I think the Everton game showed that when Nakamba came on for McGeehan after he had that head injury and Louise pushed forward, he looked quality in that number eight position and set Matty Cash up for the opening goal with that bit of magic. I think Gerard substituted him on there against Palace. It wasn't for Nakamba, it was for Jacob Ramsey, wasn't it? So... Maybe Gerard's seen the same thing and said, oh, yeah, I want him as a number eight. I don't want him in the holding. I don't want to put the shackles on him. I want to play him with a bit more freedom. I think he might play that with uh, Brazil as well, where he won the Olympics. He had a defensive mid next to him, I think. And then I think uh, he was allowed to go a bit more, play with a bit more freedom. But, yeah, I think his role on the team was evident when he went off against Wolves. Like, he went off with Buendia and we completely lost all tempo or control and just collapsed <laughs> completely. So... He's another one, been travelling, had a long summer. He might help us in the back end of this season where he's fully fit, raring to go. But at the minute, it's been hard to, for him to piece a few games together because of just fitness and, and then the injury. Yeah, it's just it's been difficult, but definitely a serious player. He's one of these players, and I think it highlights his importance because he isn't necessarily the answer, almost like a Morgan Sanson. He's when he's missing, people point out the problem and push him as a solution. It's almost always Douglas Louise when he's yeah. out of the team. Something is picked out. When he comes back, it'll be the answer. He might not be the answer, but I think that speaks a lot to his worth in the fan base, his worth in the club as well. Um, exciting player. I think he's toned down a lot of what I really liked about him since his first um, Premier League season. And I think if you go to the League Cup match, his pass against Brighton, yeah. that kind of looped over and yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. roulette's in with it. He seems to leave the some of the trickery now to, to someone like John McGinn, who seems to be yeah. pulling it off every single really game. Really <laughs> of course, a holding midfielder, that role doesn't really allow for that because yeah. he can, look, his age, he can be naive, he can get copped on the ball sometimes, but he's got a flair, he's got intensity, he's got passion. He's Dougie and we love him. And uh, he's, he's again, the theme, he can only get better. It's been a been a decent year for him. Mm -hmm. Brazil Caps, all sorts, involved in so much, so much football this year internationally. And for Aston Villa, it's hard to you know see that he hasn't come down with a more serious injury because yeah. of actually how he's been playing. But I think it's, you know, he's a credit to the club, credit to Brazil. He's only going to get better. And the big theme of that is a, such a positive one for Aston Villa, Pat. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, well, here's what Ash Priest had to say about our last man, Douglas Louise. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. The reason why Douglas gets ahead of John McGinn, his midfield partner, because McGinn can be either really brilliant or can be bad. There's no in between with John McGinn. Whereas Douglas Louise, he's um, a bit of missy when he's out the side in, in midfield. He's, like, he's a key cog, very understated member of Villa's team here. Uh, knowing they're just aren't as good without him. Um, yeah, 77 appearances he's had Douglas since he arrived from Man City, £15 million. Pounds and, He's, the, he, he's one of the main reasons why Villa stayed up in, in 2020, um, in that summer. He was Villa's best player in, the, in that project restart. And in this calendar year as well, helping Villa to 11th place in the end. Douglas was massive. And even if he's just 23 as well, now, 23 years of age. He's got that experience with him now. Gold medal winner for Brazil. And he's got a number incredible ceiling in terms of development. So very much a long-term player in Villa's future. Classy operator when he's in full flow and... Villa have been missing him over the course of the last few weeks with the hamstring issue, but yeah, a phenomenal talent and um, he's gonna, only going to get better and better. Right then, Pat, that wraps it up. Four people oh up for the award. Um, what's interesting about this year's award, Pat, is that obviously we don't have the man who would win it, Jack Grealish, <laughs> but the, the guy who last year when we ran the award won it at, at a canter. 
Um, there was no no argument there. He was up for the main award as well. He actually came second. And if the award had lasted longer, probably could have beat Mo Salah to, to have claimed the whole thing. He obviously was an important last player last year. But it opens up to the uh, the chasing pack this year. And, you know, that that is good for the club. Yeah, you, you always had the one-man team thing. But yeah, Villa's the winner last year. Jack Grealish this year definitely won't be, which is uh, which is exciting. Yeah, yeah, he won't be up for the uh, the main one either. <laughs> no, he's no, not main. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he, no isn't, he isn't up for the Man City one either. So yeah, yeah. Uh, there you go. Probably should have stayed, mate. Yeah, exactly. It's a big award, but uh, yeah, you can uh, vote for your Aston Villa player of the of the four we've chosen in the link in the description, and of course. Feel free to partake in the main vote between a host of Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool and West Ham players and, and Manchester United, of course. No Aston Villa player made the main one, but Emmy Martinez was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty close. Uh, maybe maybe next year, but he had, a, he had a great year as well. But yeah, the choice is all yours. We leave it into your hands. Thank you for joining me, Pat, and up the Villa. Yes, thank you. Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please do let us know. We love hearing your feedback. We'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, up the villa. Up the villa.